Hi guys, um, it's Valentine's Day, or at least it was, and I actually meant to film this on Valentine's Day and then I had technical difficulties. So um, here I am again. This this video is going to be about um, books that are very near and dear to my heart um, because of Valentine's Day. The thing though is that these have to be books that I actually have copies of to show you, and there can only be one book per author. The Last Dragon Slayer by Jasper Ford. Board. This book, I just read it in the past week and it is amazing. It's, I mean, it's full of Jasper Ford's usual wittiness and cleverness and all of that. Um, um, but it's just, it's so amazing. I think it's my favorite book by him for sure. Um, it's about this girl named Jennifer Strange. She basically catches wind of this prophecy that the last dragon is about to die by the hand of a dragon slayer. And she doesn't want it to die at all, because with it dies probably the rest of the magic, and um, she's all bummed out. Um, and it turns out that she is the last dragon slayer. And so, since she doesn't even want to kill the dragon, you find yourself wondering throughout this whole book, like, what can possibly happen to make her kill the dragon? by the predicted time. And it's just, it's so crazy. It's an awesome, awesome book. And, um, one thing I really like about it too is that it's set in sort of a modern setting that's also a medieval setting. So, you know, people drive cars, um, all kinds of just normal stuff like that. Um, but at the same time, there's like a king and all kinds of just medieval stuff and medieval ideals and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and yeah, it's just an awesome, awesome book. So uh, I highly recommend it. Here's a book that I'm probably never going to talk about in any video ever again. This is my one chance. Um, that is the biography of my favorite band, Nightwish. So um, I love Nightwish. They're my favorite band in the whole world. They have been since I was a teenager. I, I just love them. They made me who I am, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I especially totally love this guy, the guitar player, M. Poop Warren, and he's an amazing, amazing amazing musician etc etc and he's an awesome performer like seriously but this okay so this book the reason I like it so much is because um it tells all kinds of exciting stories about the band because it documents basically their whole first 10 years as a band pretty much and there's all kinds of just weird stuff in it that like um that you don't even really find out about um otherwise and so next on the list we have Oryx and Crake by, oh, damn it, there's a sun in the way. All right, um, Mar uh, Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Crake. And um, this is possibly my favorite book. It, it's actually tied with Lord of the Rings for my favorite book. Um, it's just a fantastic, fantastic book. It's actually the first one in a series, but I still think this is the best one out of the whole series. Um, so this is actually kind of a weird speculative-ish book. Um, it's, and Margaret Atwood actually won sci-fi awards for it or something like that, and it's not even really sci-fi, like, that's how hardcore it is. Um, so there's all kinds of weird stuff in it about, um, like, you know, for instance, they grow, um, extra organs on pigs, or, or like, weird animals that look like pigs, and, um, so that, that people can just get organ transplants and, um, and, like, liver transplants and stuff like that more easily. Um, so they just grow pigs with, like, extra skin, extra kidneys, whatever the organ is. Um, and they, they grow meat without having to kill an animal. Um, it's, it's just, there's a lot of stu cool stuff in this book. And honestly, like, whenever I meet someone, I always think about, like, hmm, I wonder if they would like Oryx and Crake. Like, that's literally the first thing that pops in my head, kind of. Next, we have The Anansi Boys by Neil Gaiman. Um, this is another just fantastic book that I could not put down. Um, it's just, I don't know, just the writing in this book and just everything, um, I'm trying to keep the book out of the sunlight so you can see it. Um, but maybe I should just hold it in the sun instead. Okay, so basically this book is about, um, a dude named Fat Charlie, and his name is Fat Charlie because... Um, whenever, basically whenever his dad names something, it just becomes whatever that, that name is. And, like, no one can look at, look at whatever that thing or that animal or that person is without, like, thinking of that. And so it's just crazy. And so Fat Charlie is kind of an interesting character because he, like, actually is a much more confident and self-assured person than he, like, deep inside than he really feels like he is. And he kind of has to find that the whole time. But there's all kinds of crazy exciting stuff in this book. Like, just the plot is just too 
Um, I mean, if you've ever read anything by Neil Gaiman, it's kind of the the same, the, the very much in the same way. The plot is just too like you can't really just summarize it at all. Like no summary does it justice. It's my favorite Neil Gaiman book by far, even though I love all of his books that I've read. And last but not least, we have The Last Unicorn. Um, this is, um, uh, this has a movie version of it that is also really awesome. Um, it's like a cartoon movie with Mia Farrow and Christopher Lee and uh, Angela Lansbury and all kinds of other cool people doing the voices. This, if you've seen the movie, which probably more people have than have read the book, I don't know, it's a pretty popular movie. Um, the book is basically the movie. Like, the movie followed it really, really well. But the book, with the book, you get a lot more closure, a lot more stuff happening, just, um, it's, it's just better. And also, for those who have um, seen the movie, there is no tree with boobs in it. I mean, yes, they do tie him to a tree still, but it doesn't, like, become alive and grow boobs in it. So if you're afraid of encountering that scene in the book, don't be. It's not really in it. I hope you like my um, favorite uh, books that are very near and dear to my heart. So uh, what books are um, the most near and dear to your heart? I would like to know, so leave it in the comments. And I will see you next time. Bye.